Okay guys, this is Paul from ProPhysique.com and today's video, I'm just doing an introduction. We're gonna do a clip, a segment from our podcast with Dr. Bill Campbell. Lauren Conlon and myself interviewed Dr. Bill Campbell who is working on physique enhancement, exercise science, over here, I'm pointing in the direction of University of South Florida. So lots of cool insights into the research that's going on. You're gonna to wanna to hear about some of the studies that are gonna be coming out. And you're also gonna to wanna to hear about Dr. Campbell's unique contest diet where he ate candles. That's the introduction. Welcome back. I don't know what episode it is. I don't care because we a. have a special guest Yay. today. Say hello, Dr. Campbell. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> Very happy to be here. So anyone that follows Lauren and I knows Dr. Campbell very well, but for the people that are tuning in for the first time, why don't you give us the, the Dr. Campbell 411. story? Yeah. Is What's that a thing? On? Who are you? What are you All right. So I am a <laughs> professor at the University of South Florida. I direct the Performance and Physique Enhancement Laboratory there. <laughs> I have been there 11 years. I am the graduate program coordinator. Um, across from me at this table is one of my former graduates of the program. Is that good for the program or bad? <laughs> that is good for the program because what's happening Shut the now, fuck up, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening now because of graduates like her podcasts like this, we're respect, getting respect. more and more students that want to join our team and do physique type research. So I have a good question for you then. In the entire realm of the physique sport or exercise science, what percentage of people actually study physique enhancement? In an academic? In Correct. The, oh. So, because it was a shock to me when I started taking classes at USF that no one gives a shit. No, I think <laughs> no one cares. No, that's right. Um, to answer your question, very few, maybe none other than us. Now, there are certain researchers out there that do similar research now and then, okay. but a wholly dedicated research program to the science of physique enhancement, I don't think exists. Okay. No, I think this now people that come to mind obviously are Brad Schoenfeld. Well, I think uh, of the Jason university Kaliba. in Auckland, yeah, the university in Auckland where Eric Helms got his degree yeah. and Brett Contreras, Eric they Helms. seem to be focused on the physique stuff or at least closer than what like more endurance or those yes. type of things. Yeah, a lot of the, I mean, but a lot of the people that we're thinking of are individuals, you yes. know, just individuals within a school, like, yeah, Jason Kaliva, and even um, Abby Smith-Ryan and yes. all that, you know, like those, Very they, body composition they're focused. body comp focused, or maybe they're performance and physique focused, but your program is definitely one on its own, I would say. We can... Yes. Well, and it's, it's kind of in the last, what, four or five years, you know? Oh, yeah. Since I've been there, I mean, it's literally changed 180. I mean, that was when I found about it was because of you when you were... Yeah. We were actually at the one of Lane's seminars, and you came and gave a presentation and mentioned that Lauren was coming um, after she got her bachelor's from Florida State, and I was like, oh, okay. And I was just moving here at that time, so it was perfect. Yes. Um, yeah. So is is this your, your goal to take over the world? <laughs> I don't know if that's my goal. In fact, I probably wouldn't want that to be my goal. I would screw that up. I would like to think my goal is to do fun stuff. And I'm really at a point in my career. This is fun for us. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's just hanging out with students. Um, if that changes the well, world, great. It's the Me Too movement, Bill. You got to be careful how you word things these days. <laughs> God damn it, Me Too movement. What about that fucking song that got banned because of these losers? Um, oh, do you yeah. hear about that? Baby, it's cold outside is yeah. a rape song. I'm like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. If you if you just read the lyrics, <laughs> it is a little rapey. Okay, but you're taking the whole thing. Out yeah, of context. seriously, yeah. like it's also like yeah. the 40s. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, oh my god, it's just people are so <laughs> absolutely asinine. If Anyways. you look at the world through any lens, you can find anything to fit your your per, your, your little agenda. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and I think the fitness world is perfect for that too because you can you can make the case for high reps, low reps, keto diet, you know, all yeah. carbs. You can make the case for anything if you want to look through your specific lens hard enough. Um, so tell us, Bill, what's exciting right now for you guys um, in you know research at USF. So let's let's go with what we're doing now, yeah. and then I'll jump into what we're going going to be doing. So we just finished data collection on a female resistance trained subject population only. Okay. My student, Lauren Colenso Semple, Semple, she's what I call my second Lauren in my <laughs> life. She 
designed the study. We had Brett Contreras and Brad Schoenfeld help design this study, but it was really uh, Lauren's brainchild. And what we, what we decided to do was compare a very high lower body resistance training volume in females versus a normal amount of training in the lower body. So I'm sure you guys work with clients or have clients that are females that just bury themselves. They cannot get enough sets most, and yeah, enough I would reps say and most, volume. Most prefer to do that. Like it's so, gotten common to know. Like, oh, I want to train glutes nine days a week. Yeah, you're like, um, yeah. no. Uh, I'm going to train twice a day, three days a week, and then the other three days I'll just train once. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to train them in, in, during the yeah. day and at night. That's it. Can I train my glutes while I'm sleeping? <laughs> yeah. So the, the high group was up over 80 sets per week of lower wow. body volume. The, the normal group is th about 30 sets. And the, was the normal group over one session or two? Uh, both groups were three sessions per week. Oh, that's still, they did glutes okay. every single session. They did squats every single session. So it's a very glute dominant program okay and the interesting thing is we actually measured the muscle thickness of the glutes and the quads and the hamstrings now are you the measuring this i am not okay now my wife did give me she gave me permission to do this as long as it was approved by the university but we actually hired this last year dr sam buckner from ole miss okay um, he, and he was mentored by uh, dr jeremy lenicky he is a great... He was mentored by Dr. Jeremy Lennon? Yep. He was. How old are we? I remember when he was in school. Oh I think goodness. Dr. Buckner was his first student out. So. Okay. Yeah, when uh, I found I feel, that out, I was like, holy shit. I feel a little better. I was like, so, yeah, so we always had two people in the room. Um, Lauren did all the measurements. So um, we also did quads and hamstrings. And we okay. don't have the date. I don't have any data to share with okay. you yet. We're still analyzing that. Oh, and the other thing nice is tease. cortisol. We also measured salivary cortisol. Salivary cortisol. Salivary cortisol. No, I don't know the difference in salivary works technical. pretty well. Okay, yeah. Is it is it compared? Don't do salivary leptin. No, ever. salivary cortisol. Has salivary been around cortisol has yeah, been around a long time. Been around the block. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I would probably. So still it's say reliable. The blood. It's not like. Yeah. Ex yeah, it okay. is. Yes. Okay. It's probably so, the only reliable blood um, spit measure, right? That we. Well, we didn't ha we didn't feel comfortable with the salivary leptin measurements that after we did. mine. Yeah, I mean yeah. that was terrible. Um, so, but again, I feel very comfortable with, yeah. with the, with the cortisol. And of course we got a grant to do this, a small grant. Otherwise who pays for the cortisol? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, People have no idea how much that costs. Oh my God. Well, it's, it's salivary cortisol. It's not as much as a blood test, right? Uh, we paid, I don't, I think. What was cost, the frequency that you were doing the salivary? Uh, twice. Test? Baseline. No, but you have to pay for the, to get it like oh, analyzed. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. You have okay. to send away the saliva and then they analyze okay. it. But it is still more convenient because you don't have to go to a lab to get blood drawn. Yes. Okay. Way more convenient. Hey, to spit in this tube, it's pretty gross, but it's doable. Yeah. Um, and then you freeze people's saliva and then you send it away. But um, that still costs money for like the kits. Yeah. So how long until we expect to get some results? I'd from say this? we'll analyze this data. We just we're sending out the cortisol this week. I think Dr. Buckner has finished his analysis of the muscle thickness of the of the glutes, quads, ham. So I, I don't know. I'd say February. Okay. Is there anything you can talk about as far as anything? This would explain why Brad comes out with a study every week. He's probably just involved in a lot of different studies, right? Oh yeah, he's in, he's involved in everything. Yeah, I feel like every day he's well, he's this. a master collaborator. Okay. Like he is so networked. Um, yeah. Well, even on our study, our high versus low protein study, I was not having the time to write it up. Brad, would you help? Yep. We turned it around, wrote, wrote up the introduction. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I find somebody that's good at what they do and they love to do it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, having, and again, he, he had a role in designing this study. Um, that, that we, the, the high. So without giving up any data that you don't have yet, did you see any visual differences in butts? Um, <laughs> but I did not, but again, I wasn't involved <laughs> in that measurement. I was, um, one thing that we, did that any I girls was, get sponsored by a legging company? <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm aware of. Did they become Gymshark athletes? <laughs> no, they did get, um, once again, dimatized nutrition, donated protein to that study. So they, they all, everybody, protein was standardized throughout the, the study. The one thing that I was hearing, because I would talk to the subjects, the people in the higher group seem to be getting fairly beat up by that eight. That's what I was going to ask if we were allowed joints. to talk about that. Yeah. 
So this is not the first time that I've noticed this in one of our studies. It seems like if you're going to push the envelope, kind of have to be like right there. Yes. Right? Well, it's not and like... we have to appreciate when we read research, these studies that are published, including mine, they're not to be taken that you would do this for 12 months out of the year. These might just be a block of time yeah. that you can handle this much volume. So again, that's anecdotal. Uh, I don't have, uh, we'll share that in the publication. Yeah, but that's good because, you know, when you're talking about training from the perspective of designing training programs, you build in mesocycles where you might have lower volume, higher volume. So, you know, if you can handle a short intense phase, that's going to be beneficial. You could suck it up for eight weeks and go, I'm going to just crush my glutes for eight weeks. And then, yes, you know, if, if there's a benefit. No. Yeah, and we'll see. Now, what if, and I always take the position it's not going to be a difference. Well, what if there is no difference from doing all of this glute work and this lower body work? I don't think that's going to change the behavior of it. No, because they're going to have half the crowd that goes, well, I can get the same results in doing less. And then the other half the crowd might go, well, I like going to the gym more. Yes. So it's not hurting me. Yes. The same yep. results. So I think that's where the real... There's always a... I mean, obviously, every individual has a different tolerance for training, especially with, like, ligaments, joints, that kind of stuff, yeah, obviously. Even recovery. Recovery there's is huge. Yeah, huge I mean, variation. Yeah, recovery is huge. How much you're sleeping, how much you're active outside of work. Who did you um, train with that can handle, like, tons of volume? And you told me you worked out with this person. Was it Holly?